What's up guys, now in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the GTX 1070 Ti. We have taken a look at it in the past in older machines that have really held it back. So instead we're going to open it up a little bit and see how well it performs in 2024. What kind of games can we actually play on one of these cards nowadays? Well, let's find out. So the GTX 1070 Ti was released by Nvidia all the way back in 2017 as a high-end graphics card and they really did live up to that name. They were extremely popular with gamers, not just because of their fantastic pricing, but they also boasted some very impressive specifications. The 1070 Ti had a GP104 die that is a Pascal architecture with a base clock speed of 1607 MHz. They had a boost clock speed of 1683 MHz, 2432 shaders, sitting on a whopping 8GB of GDDR5 memory, which was pretty impressive back then. They sat on a 256-bit bus with a PCI Gen 3x16 interface, and they used around 180 watts. They were released for around $399, which was about half the price of the GTX 1080 Ti back in the day, which actually made them even more compelling to gamers as well, because you were getting pretty decent performance for a much lower price. The exact card that we got here today is the Founders Edition, and I absolutely love the look of this card. It is pretty much identical to the 1080 Ti, which I put up there in probably my top three best looking graphics cards ever. I managed to pick this one up for about £80, which is pretty decent considering I got the yeah, original box as well you don't seem to see many with the original box but i managed to scoop one and it looks really nice in the studio that is probably on the low end of the mark at the moment because generally they go for between 80 and 110 pounds depending on where you buy them from and what quality you get so i think i did exceptionally well with that and i think the model looks absolutely gorgeous when it comes to the looks of the card it does boast this beautiful silver kind of detailing around and it is a blower card on the side we have the geforce gtx logo and that actually lights up as well so it looks fantastic in a system it's really there for people who really wanted to show off back in the day and now that it's about seven years old you can show them off again it does only come with an eight pin pci express connection which is the other kind of subtle difference to the 1080 ti and a pretty decent back plate which makes it look nice and clean in a system when it comes to connections on the back, we do get three DPI connections as well as one HDMI, but we also get the older DVI connection, which is actually pretty cool because if anybody out there does have an older monitor, the card will still support it. And overall, I think they look fantastic. But the bigger question is, how well do they perform? For those of you out there that want to play the super new AAA titles, unfortunately, we've got some bad news because it's not going to provide the experience that you expect. If you're expecting magical results out of this card when it comes to the new AAA titles, including things like Alan Wake 2, it's unfortunate that you're not going to get it. The game does actually start and it is actually playable, but running the game in 1080p with a high preset, you are going to get low frame rates throughout. We managed to get an average of 29 frames per second with a 1% low of 23. You could boost those frames slightly by, of course, lowering the settings, but it starts to really take away from the game because that game does look gorgeous in that kind of setting. And to be honest, it doesn't really clear the game up when you're in those high detail locations. When you're in foliage or you have lots of things on screen, you do suffer from very low 1% lows and quite a bit of stuttering. So it's probably not a game that you really want to play on this card. It is time to upgrade if that is your target. We saw similar performances in Space Marine 2 when in the game in 1080p with a high preset. We did manage to get a pretty decent average of 46 frames per second with a 1% low of 32. That does mean that the game is playable, but again, when you're in those high intense moments with lots of things on the screen, it does suffer very badly from low frames. This is particularly when you're in battles in this game because when there's lots and lots of enemies on the screen, the low 1% low counts really do cause a lot of stuttering at that moment. And again, it just completely takes it away from the game. You could lower settings in this game, but it still suffers a very similar thing in those areas. So again, another game that you probably wouldn't want to play on this. Now the card may not perform on those games as many would hope, but it doesn't mean it's all over because there are still thousands of modern games that this card will actually play and you can get a pretty decent experience from them as well. For those of you wanting to play games like Back for Blood, you can get a fantastic experience out of this card. Running the game in 1080p with a high preset, you can easily achieve a 153 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 77. The game is absolutely smooth with these settings and it does look gorgeous too. 
you could probably boost the resolution here to 1440p and still get a pretty decent 60 fps experience so that is a complete win for anybody with one of these cyberpunk 2077 was a game that i thought would actually uh, show this card up a little bit but with its recent updates and optimizations it's actually turning out to be a pretty decent game running it on this card in 1080p with a medium preset where the game still looks absolutely beautiful you can get an average of around 62 frames per second with a 1% low of 51 absolutely no stuttering on that game with this card at those settings you can even drive the cars around which is where the game really does suffer from low frame rates but it doesn't on this card it does have the vram to push through it and it does have the grunt to be able to achieve it as well dead island 2 is a pretty modern game and it is well optimized so of course it's going to play on the gtx 1070 ti running this game in 1080p with a high preset you can get an average of around 94 frames per second with a one percent low of 55. we didn't see here the massive drop in one percent low that we do with lots of other cards you usually get about half the one percent low as to the average this card actually managed to push through that and get a pretty smooth experience. Doom Eternal, of course, will run on this card, but we can boost up our settings here due to that 8GB of VRAM. Running the game in 1080p with an Ultra Nightmare setting this time, you can get an average of around 150 frames per second with a 1% low of 117. Clearly, you can boost that game up to 1440p and still get a great experience from it. And within the Ultra Nightmare settings, the game looks absolutely stunning. No need for ray tracing here at all because it just looks great as it is. Another great modern game that you can play on the GTX 1070 Ti is Spider-Man Remastered. Running this game in 1080p with a high preset, you can get an average of around 94 frames per second with a 1% low of 56. The game, again, just like Doom Eternal, looks absolutely stunning at these settings and there is no drops in your 1% lows here. You're going to get a super smooth experience throughout. We tried pretty much most of the map area going low, going high, and it just was a very smooth ride all the way through. So for any of you out there that are Marvel fans and you want to go and pick up with that game, this card will get the job done. The last game in our testing was probably one of the newest on the list, and that is Remnant 2. It is a very modern game and it is quite demanding, but this card managed to achieve some pretty decent results. Running the game in 1080p with a medium preset, this time having to enable FSR 3 with a quality setting, we managed to get an average of 65 frames per second with a 1% low of 46. Now that was a much better result than I expected previously, although if the game didn't have FSR 3 technology, you're kind of on a borderline here of being playable. Of course, you do have it in the game, so you can and should use it if you do have this card, and you can really boost those frame rates while still having the game look very, very good. So there we have it the gtx 1070 ti is not dead yet you can still get away with playing a lot of modern games out there and you can get some pretty decent experiences out of them you can even boost a few of them up to 1440p and still get a 60 fps experience it may struggle on those super new titles due to missing technologies it doesn't have any ray tracing cores so don't think about doing ray tracing on it it doesn't have mesh shaders so probably avoid playing games like Alan Wake 2 but you don't have to play those games a lot of people don't play those games so it can still actually hold up its own I'm actually quite impressed with the performance of this card it did perform a lot better than I expected it to particularly for its age and it looks absolutely beautiful it's going to stick around with us for a while because obviously I've got the box I've got the beautiful card it's going to go on display here in the studio but we haven't finished testing it let me know in the comments below what kind of games do you want us to test with it and see what kind of performance we can get out of it. I'm sure we will be using it in another system build at some point, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to catch that. And I'm sure as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.